Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with another tutorial. So I made this bracelet, this it's ombre from purple to blue to turquoise um, on a Jesse James Beads live on Facebook this weekend. And I want a matching necklace. So um, that's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> I'm gonna bust out some, my uh, bead soup is what we the theme was this weekend. So these are all my boho beads and special beads from Jazzy James Beads. So um, whenever I have a leftover strand or leftover mix beads that I haven't used on a project, I pop them in this old school style bead case and put them in my bookcase. So they've just been sitting there staring at me for a long time. So I think we're going to make um, a turquoise to purple necklace using these four um, bead trays. So I'm going to get them all out. And then um, this one, I ended up using some silver beads on the back and then some crystals. I think I'm out of these crystals, um, but I'm going to check my stash because I really like them. And then on this side, I used <clears throat> some aqua and I actually just used um, a bead mix in a video I created today using some of these. So I have some of those left. Um, all right, I'm going to dump out some beads and I'll be back. All right, so if I need to, I have some of the most recent Pantone strands and I think one from last year um, that have some extra boho beads on them, but I'm hoping to make this mostly bead soup. Um, sorry, it's a little bit of a weird angle. And um, So I'm going to start with turquoise at the back, working down to the royal blue, up back into purple. Um, that's what I did on my bracelet and I liked how it looked. So I definitely want the necklace to be close in design to the bracelet um so that would mean one of these larger boho blue crystal encrusted beads down at the front and then i also have two of these rose balls which i really liked and then i, I was gonna try and stick in the same size but it, it's not gonna be i'm not gonna have enough beads Maybe I will, but I might, probably won't have enough beads if I do that. So I'm just going to try and um, use different sizes throughout the necklace. So I want to go into lighter blue as I'm moving along. And obviously this is going to be mixed metal. And I'm just kind of setting everything out. I don't, this is not necessarily the order everything will go in. a lot of blue so I might take out some of these because I want I don't want it just to be focused on blue I do want turquoise and purple to be showing it in the front as well so I think I'm gonna edit these and possibly those but I do really love these and I really love all, all six of these and then the seventh one right here. I think I'll edit those. And then if I need them, I can put them back in. So let's see. I'm gonna choose the ones that I for sure want to be in the necklace. I'm really loving this guy. It's some shell with turquoise and, well, pale aqua. Um, I don't know how that guy got in there. Um, this one's kind of cool. It's leather with rhinestones on it. And then I definitely want these two in there. The necklace might be um, a little lopsided though if I go with just larger beads because I have only one style <laughs> of the smaller purple ones, um, which are these. So these are gonna be all up towards the back because they're gonna, they're gonna kind of just be like almost like a color block on that side. So this is almost like a periwinkle. So we're gonna go into the purple from that. And yes, I'm working on both sides at the same time. And then this is a, actually, this is a lighter purple than this one. And then we get into this darker purple. Um, I might put doubles depending on what happens on this side of the necklace. I definitely want this guy in there. Look at how beautiful that is. <gasps> Gorgeous. I have to make a second bracelet. <laughs> uh, I, no, I do have another one of those. Hmm, might have to do that. That is probably the lightest blue bead besides maybe this one, but I don't really need to use that one. I definitely want to get this guy in there. That's a fun one. And this one, which is very similar to this one. 
And then we're going into darker turquoise. And I'm a little bummed that I don't have a bigger turquoise um, boho bead besides these, you know, seed beaded ones. I want one that looks like this or like this, but a little bit darker to put towards the front. But it's okay. Sometimes that happens. This one's a little darker. And I'm not too worried. I'm just not too worried about the, the size. So I think this is looking good. I think I'm going to put it in another one of these purples kind of balance that out this is so pretty and do I need to put anything else in this guy didn't make it in no, I think I'm okay without that one Okay, I think I am good with how this is turning out. Now I'm gonna have to find beads for the back of the necklace. I have this color trends mix, um, and I like I said, I had some open from a uh, necklace I did today. I also have some of these thunder polish beads, but they're more blue than turquoise, so I think I'm gonna keep those out. Oh, I missed these two little guys. I think the orange would be a little distracting, though, so I think I'm okay. Um, I want to use these crystal rondelles on the turquoise side, like I did on my bracelet. So I'll put these back here. Um, and then I'm gonna find some purple crystals to go on the other side. I found these older purple Jesse ba James bead strands in my stash. This one has um, some beads featuring Dakota stones. Um, and then this one is African lilac. Let's see. I think in these big chunky crystals in the middle here. I have three on this side. Um, and then another three on this strand. So I'm sure I can find four, two more of these if I need them. And then I pulled out some matching silver beads from my stash, uh, my, my bead soup. This is how I store my bead soup for Jesse James beads. This is all metal and this is all crystal, which I didn't go through there to see. I see a purple bead right there. I don't see too many really bright purple crystals, so I think we're okay. I kind of went through it yesterday for the bracelet. Um, so each side will have a um, crystal ball, maybe two, um, a one of these, and then a heart, because I just love how the heart looks fi finishing off the bracelet. So I'm going to go ahead and string, and I'll be back. All right, we're ready to um, put on the clasp, and I just pulled this out of um, leftovers from a class I taught during JJB summer camp last year. So I think it looks pretty cute. Um, and then I pulled out some Beadalon bead crimps, or crimp beads. And my crimping pliers. So I'll put on the crimp bead first. Stick on my clasp, and you can use a jump ring here if you'd like, but I'm just gonna go right onto the clasp. Come back down through the crimp bead. Slide that crimp bead a little bit closer to the clasp, but giving it still some wiggle room. You don't want it to be too tight. And we just put that in the largest valley of the crimping pliers. 
making sure that those wires are not crossed. And then we'll go ahead and crimp. And then we'll move it, we'll turn it 90 degrees, go to, up to the next notch in the pliers. And crimp and crimp and crimp. And you can put a crimp cover on that or it just looks like a silver bead. I am gonna go down through a couple of these just to hide my wire and then I'll snip later on. And then we will do the same thing on the other side. down through a couple beads to get some leverage. make sure that there aren't any gaps between any of our beads that are completely noticeable but we also want the necklace to be kind of loosey-goosey in that it's got um, some slack it's not in a straight line and we're gonna pull this as tightly as we can while the necklace is still not in a straight line and then we'll crimp I'm gonna give that a little bit of wiggle room there and crimp We'll cut our wire, our little tail there, and we have a stunning statement necklace. Oh, I forgot to crimp or cut my tail over here. And this is definitely a statement necklace because most of the beads on here are statement beads, focals. I love doing a whole necklace with just focals. And you want to make sure <laughs> before you crimp that your toggle will fit through with the next, the last bead on your necklace because sometimes that bead has to come through a toggle. So let me see if I can get this to close. There we go. I had to do a little bit of work, but I was able to get it open. You might want to put a smaller bead. This one's fun, uh, you know, like a weird shape. Normally we would do just like um, a circle or um, a round bead, but because of the weird shape, it would have a hard time going through um, my toggle. However, it worked out. Um, I love this necklace. I will obviously include some really pretty photos of it, but yeah, look what you can do with your bead soup. We have a bead soup boho necklace. Love it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.